Chapter 8, The Possible. I have science first period. My teacher's name is Mr. Ham, and all the kids make fun of him behind his back by doing oinking sounds. But I kind of like him. He's funny and wears silly ties that have lobsters and cupcakes. I barely made it to class in time this morning because we were running late. My grandfather wouldn't leave until he finished printing out something from the internet. I didn't even have time to go to my locker and get my science textbook. Naturally, the first thing Mr. Ham says is, Please open your textbooks to page 30. I groan. You can share with me, Momo whispers, and slides her book between us. Thanks, I whisper back. At lunch, it's Sloppy Joe Day. No one's exactly sure what's in the Sloppy Joes, but everyone agrees that they're gross. After I get through the lunch line, I'm looking for Brianna when I hear someone shouting my name. Ellie, over here! My grandfather is sitting at a table and waving wildly at me. I saved you a seat. He's wearing another interesting outfit today. White button-up shirt with a light blue tie, polyester khakis, and of course, black dress socks. The quirkiest part of his outfit is the ponytail holder. It's one of mine, a bright pink one, and it kind of works on him. He taps a pile of papers in front of him. I'm going to show that Raj character. That's what he's been calling him, that Raj character. Is that what you were printing out this morning, I ask? What are they anyway? My articles. Articles? I told you I've published quite a lot. I'm very well known. I have a virtual fan club in Finland, you know, he says. You're famous? His shoulders dip a little. It only has 231 members, he admits. But even so, they're going to go nuts when I finally announce my success with Team Elvinius. I'm going to be the next Jonas Salk. It's like he's talking about a relative I'm supposed to know but have never met. Who's Jonas Salk, I ask. My grandfather shakes his head. Are you learning anything at all in this place? He looks past me. If this country spent half as much time on science education as cheering some idiot on with a ball, you'd know who Jonas Salk is. I turn to see what he's looking at and feel a stab of pain. At the edge of the lunch court, a bunch of girls are throwing a volleyball around. Brianna's with them. She spikes the ball and the girls collapse on the ground in laughter. I force myself to look away. Tell me about Salk, I say. Jonas Salk developed the vaccine for polio. I'm almost afraid to ask, but I do it anyway. What's polio? Polio is a terrible disease. It left children crippled, killed them. Salk and his group of scientists pioneered a vaccine to prevent it. He even tested it on himself. Himself? This seems nuts to me, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Was he a mad scientist or something? My grandfather sits up straighter and stares at me. All scientists are a little bit mad, Ellie. For a moment, I think he's kidding, but then I realize he's serious. Average people just give up at the obstacles we face every day. Scientists fail again and again and again, sometimes for their whole lives, but we don't give up because we want to solve the puzzles. I like puzzles, I say. Yes, but have you ever tried to put a puzzle together and given up because it was too hard? I nod. Scientists? never give up. They keep trying because they believe in the possible. The possible? That it's possible to create a cure for polio. That it's possible to sequence the human genome. That it's possible to find a way to reverse aging. That science can change the world. And I get it. A palm tree sways in the breeze, its fawns brown and shedding. Something shifts inside me, like a puzzle piece snapping into place. I look at my grandfather. I think I know where Raj hangs out after school.